All right, what's going on there, folks? Welcome back here to a Sunday afternoon, December 14th, 2025. It's 9.36 p.m. here local time uh, with a 4.2 earthquake coming into the Santa Rosa area of Northern California, just north here of the bay. This is just off of the uh, Rogers Creek Fault. Now, there is another fault that sits just to the east uh, of this area, and I believe it's called the Glen or the, uh, excuse me, the Bennett Valley Fault. Bennett Valley. Not showing up here on the USGS map, but there is one that runs kind of along the side here. Uh, either way, 4.2, very close to Santa Rosa. It looks like about five miles or so. So I guarantee you, this event will be felt. As of right now, it's still underneath automatic status. We'll give a quick glance here at the magnitudes that are coming in from a number of these stations. Right now, the computer system went with a uh, error rate of 0.226. Some of these stations reporting up above a 4.5. Let's go ahead and check this one out here quick, uh, real quick first. Uh, low fours, they're all in the four range. There's one in the three, a couple in the three, but there's also a few in the upper four range, as you can see here. This is a number of seismograph stations there that picked up the seismic wave, and they're all kind of pretty much putting together a preliminary earthquake. Either way, that earthquake showed up quite nicely on Petrolia Station. That's in Northern California, well north of the uh, earthquake epicenter. That's up around the Eureka area. Also showed up there on the Anza Station down in Southern California. So this could get revised. I noticed they have included the shake map here up in the yellow. And that is because it's very close to the Santa Rosa area, which uh, of course is fairly populated. A 4.2 earthquake will be felt around the area. I didn't feel it here. At least I don't think I did. Uh, I live just outside of Chico here, which would be kind of in these white lines, if you can see it on the map. Uh, but it's very possible, you know, quite a few folks felt it in the Bay Area. I'm already getting some reports of it coming into San Francisco. Uh, Napa being reported, uh, re reporting some of the earthquake shaking. And, of course, for those that are, you know, pretty much around the epicenter, it's probably going to feel a little bit stronger here. I noticed some uh, maps there, or the uh, contours of the colors, indicating that intensity. Let me see. Responses. I'm going to shut that off for now. Um population density there santa rosa up north obviously uh, you know a little bit uh populated up there anyway um maybe some minor to moderate shaking for those that are uh, specifically around this region here of that epicenter it uh looks like it's fairly shallow as well 1.2 miles that's a very shallow earthquake and again uh Kind of waiting on a review here from a seismologist once they uh, take a look at it. Underneath automatic status still. Uh, no tsunami from this earthquake. Uh, I'm not for sure why they posted this uh, update here on the Tsunami Warning Center. Uh, I'm guessing because it's pretty closer to the coast. But no tsunami from that. 1.2 miles. Pretty shallow. Again, it's on the uh, Bennett Valley fault and if i remember right i think they had a uh upper five pointer back here in 2011 i, I believe that's where that's at uh, either way it's very close here to the rogers creek fault which is connected underneath the bay area here to the hayward fault a lot of earthquake activity here recently in the bay region so this is just Another sign here, uh, potentially seeing some larger movement out around the San Francisco Bay. Southern California has been rocking and rolling as well. We've had multiple swarms down here outside of Ventura, uh, up north here of the uh, Santa Paula area. The swarm over here is kind of dropping off in terms of the numbers because it's been over the 24-hour threshold. But if you go back here last seven days, uh, it, multiple swarms. Southern California as well. In the last 30 days up here in the Bay Region, multiple swarms and various fault systems. So the West Coast is waking up. And uh, it's possible here we're waking up to a bigger earthquake very soon. 
uh, somewhere out here along the West Coast. Not a whole lot of activity happening up in Oregon and Washington. We do have to watch the Cascadia. Uh, but for now, for the most part, it seems like roughly the Bay Area, north here, the Bay Area, southward, uh, all the way down through Southern California, where the uptick here in the last 30 days has been happening. Uh, just got another notification of an earthquake coming into the same area, a 3.1 aftershock right there. Very shallow once again. Um, yeah, that is the, uh, what is that? Let me, I want to go over here to the, uh, website, Caltech website real quick and see what they have here. See if they cover that fault system there. Yeah, I don't see it. It's a Bennett Valley fault. I, if I remember right, there was definitely an earthquake out here around this region, uh, 2011, I believe. I guess we could double check that. Let's go ahead and check 4.5 and above. We're going to go back to uh, the year 2000. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, that'll work. Okay, <laughs> it's a Sunday. Hope everyone's having a great one out there. Could be a bit. Could be a busy one out here. You never know. You just never know. So let's see what we got. See if my memory is correct here with the 2011 date. Come on. Hello. There we go. Um, oh, that was a 2014 Napa earthquake. 4.5. I wonder where am I getting the 2011 event from? I don't know why. It's popping up in my head here, but... Maybe my dates are a little bit mixed up. I do remember feeling this one, the six-pointer there, 2014 Napa earthquake. But this earthquake here, the 4.5, back in 2006, it looks like it is on that Bennett Valley Fault that sits just to the east here of the Rogers Creek Fault. Um, so, a little uncertain on to, uh, you know, how big of an event that can take place there on this area. It does extend... You know, pretty close here to the Makama Fault, which is a fairly lengthy fault system that runs up through the coast range. I mean, that's got some distance with it. And, of course, the magnitude there is dependent on the length of the fault and fault rupture. And that's uh, got some decent, uh, definitely got some decent length there. Let's see if they've upgraded this or downgraded it yet. Still sitting at a 4.2. There's a 4.2. I do see the aftershock right here, 3.1. I can lower that, and that's just barely visible. But this is on the Petrolia station way up about here. Either way, that's a, a decent little shaker. Let me know if you felt this earthquake or not in the comments, uh, whether it's on the live stream or in this update video. Again, I'm waiting on... Oh, reviewed. All right. It has been reviewed. Normally, a it looks like a strike slip type of boundary here. Let me see what we got. Let's see how many reports are coming in. Not a whole lot right now. I mean, let me see what we got for the DigiFillet responses. There's a few folks out there. Santa Rosa, San Francisco, Sonoma area. Uh, reporting those earthquakes, and I'm sure a few more will come in. Uh, but it looks like they're just reporting some very light shaking. But I, I can't see how that uh, how 4.2 would be considered very light because uh, that's you know that pretty much just happened right outside of Santa Rosa, literally. Let's see what we got? Three miles, maybe five miles at the most here well within some shaking range for sure so we'll just uh we'll continue to watch this folks all i know is things have been on the uptick across the bay more recently down here across the um there's a thrust fault down here the san cayetano fault there's a thrust fault over here red mountain fault notice all these mountain ranges and the faults here run from east to west because of the stress that's just pushing up this land right up against the plate boundary the north american plate a lot of thrust faults out here in this area. The San Cayetano Fault, capable of a 7.3. And last surface rupture was, they say, less than 5,000 years. So they don't know 
you know, if it was a thousand years ago, two thousand years ago, the bad thing is if it was, you know, roughly four to five thousand years ago, then that means that we're coming up here potentially for another similar event uh, up to 7.3. But as I say in the majority of my videos, we have to be prepared across all of these faults. There's a Puente Hill stress fault that runs directly underneath Los Angeles, and it looks like looks like that may be uh, having a little earthquake on it right now, too, a 1.3. Huntington Beach down there having some swarming as well. So you know, we got to be prepared out here, folks. Definitely looking very active out here, seismically speaking. Another 2.1 coming in, much more shallower. Well, watch this. Remember here, it could easily lead to something bigger. California is just, we're pretty much sitting on some borrowed time out here. I'm, I'm out here myself. I do know there's a big one that's going to happen out here, I think, sooner than later. Whether it's the San Andreas Fault, the Hayward Fault, um, you know, any number. There's 40 or 50 faults out here that are potentially well overdue, maybe even more. Um it just got to be prepared, folks. Make sure you have an earthquake plan out here. That's the important part. We'll cover this and more. Uh, still watching Japan out here. A swarm of activity encircling the Tokyo area. That's where the mega quake warning has been issued there for the uh, northern end of the Japan Trench and the southern end here of the Chishima Trench. This image and earthquake advisory was put out by the Japanese government and... Um, yeah, they strongly think there that there's a high chance of a mega quake occurring within that region very soon. Uh, we got our own worry out here, right? What's the main worry? Um, the main worry and the largest magnitude that can take place out here is along the San Andreas Fault, uh, resulting in an 8.1 here for the full rupture of the southern branch. Um, you know, but also any areas such as the Rogers Creek Fault connection to the Hayward Faults capable of producing a 7.5. Uh, the Puente Hills Thrust Fault directly underneath Los Angeles is a little bit more concerning because it's, it's running right underneath people. Uh, at least the San Andreas Fault, you know, sits off here uh, a distance, not too far, but having a fault, having a fault system here underneath the area that's capable of producing a 7.5 and it's been thousands of years since that's happened that's more dangerous for these folks at a 7.5 magnitude than an 8.1 way over here uh, and that either way it's it's a bad scenario uh, when it comes to earthquake potential out here we've been pretty lucky right if you really think about it we've dodged um, quite a few decades without having a major major event out here uh, but it's closing in. Just be prepared, folks. We'll cover this and more in tonight's update. Stay safe out there.